Okay, I'm gonna get started. So if you read this uh, talk title and you were like, wow, one code base, three platforms, I was trying to clickbait you, so I'm glad you showed up. It's great for hackathons. Um, that's basically it. Um, no, it's not true. Um, but hackathons are a perfect use for flow. Um, so if you don't know me, uh, I'm Ryan. I'm at Lighthow on Slack. Um, so if you are interested in like Android, Flutter, or technical interviews, you can hit me up. You can hit me up about, about anything, but I would expect those to be the things you're messaging me about. Um, I want to clarify, it's going to be like a pretty short talk. Um, I hate sitting through talks that are more than like 30, 35 minutes. And even more than that, I hate writing talks that are more than 30, 35 minutes. So it's going to be pretty short. OK. So talk's basically built around a front-end framework that's called Flutter. I'm going to run it through it a bit. I'm going to talk about the basics of how you build an app. Because I basically want you guys to be able to walk out of here, understand the basics enough about how to go and write your own Flutter app. Um, so the whole like building to separate platforms is done entirely in the background for you. So it's like to build a separate platform with Flutter, you don't need to be able to do it all yourself. You just have to write the Flutter app, and the Flutter team at Google and open source has done all the work for you, so you can compile the web, Android, iOS, and desktop in the future-ish. <laughs> so, um, wrote this talk in the last week. So if anything is unclear, it's because I wrote it badly. So please ask questions if you're confused about anything at all. Just put your hand up, and I will ask, and I'll be like, yes, please tell me why I was unclear. Helps me, it's better for everyone. Especially because I sort of start really basic and I move into a bit more complex things. So I really think it's important that if you are confused about something, please speak up, please say so. OK, so what is this Flutter thing? So Flutter is a front-end framework. Uh, it's built on the programming language that's called Dart. Both Dart and Flutter are open source and sort of under Google. Um, but it allows you to write cross-platform apps very, very easily. So that's basically all Flutter is. Framework to allow you to write cross-platform apps. Um, so right now, it can compile to Android and iOS. Lots of companies are using it for that. It can compile to web, and it can compile to Mac desktop. So web has recently come into beta. So a lot of companies are testing more with it because they think that it's going to be released in the next year or so. Uh, Mac desktop is in alpha, and I think Linux and Windows desktops are both in like technical preview stage, which to me just sounds like it's not going to come out for a long time. Because um, Windows is... <laughs> anyway, it's also the only way to build apps for Fuchsia OS, which is Google's open source OS it's developing. So a lot of people think that using Flutter is great because if this OS comes in and replaces Android in some time, even in the next five years, um, then it's going to be really bad if you just have an Android app and this new OS has been released and kills Android. Uh, and a lot of people think that Google has the power to do that, even though both of these things are open source. So people are like, yeah, it's future proofing our app if we use Flutter. So I'm basically here because I love Flutter and I'm here to show it to you so you can see us just starts using Flutter more. So before I go on and tell you, like, this is what Flutter is, this is how it works, this is how you can do it, I think it's really important to say, like, why, why you should use it. Because a lot of talks will just be like, this is this thing, use it. Um, but I want to talk about why. So about two years ago, I started mobile development for the first time. Uh, I did a lot of Android the last few years. Um, and in between 2018 and 2019, I did Android dev at Atlassian. Atlassian's now hiring. Might have wanted me to say that. Um, <laughs> so at Atlassian, we had two teams. We had an Android team, and we had an iOS team. Um, I think it was something like 14 developers just for this one app, because we had to have seven for each of the platforms. Um, which meant every feature had to be done twice, every test had to be written twice, things practically had to be designed completely differently twice because of what was existing. Um, it's just like really, really expensive, and it's, it can be a real problem. And we're getting to the point now where cross-platform frameworks are becoming to a point where they're good enough that it's not like sacrificing something to go cross-platform. It's not, oh, you know, it's, oh, it's slower, it's harder, it's, people don't know it, it's, it's just better. So, especially now that Flutter was officially released at the end of last year, and so was React Native. So, second thing I want to cover is why I think Flutter does cross-platform well compared to some of the other frameworks that are out there. So, one of the biggest, like, most compared things is React Native, um, which is done very similarly to React and built by Facebook. Um, so, there's two reasons why I think Flutter does things really well. And I'm not going to go like, super in-depth, but I'm going to touch on them both. So firstly is that Flutter doesn't compile to native components. So what this basically means is when I write something with Flutter, 
it's its own thing. It doesn't mean an Android button. It doesn't mean an iOS button. It doesn't mean web anything. It's just this like layer. Flutter does its own rendering for it. So if I write something in React Native as a button, it will create an Android button for me. It'll create an Android, an iOS button for me. So the reason this is like specific to Flutter is it's really important to be able to do more. Like apps are becoming more and more complex, and being restricted by like what native can do and how native apps are built can really take a toll on how your app works and like how far you can go with it. So the ceiling of like what you can do with a Flutter app is way higher because it doesn't rely on native components underneath it like some cross-platform things do. So, secondly, this is like my own personal thing is like almost everything cross-platform that's not Flutter is all like JavaScript and built on web tech. So it's like people who love writing like web apps and they're like, you know what, we can do this on Android. So they just shove a bunch of like web stuff and put it in an app. Um, and like I've done a lot of reading on like cross-platform apps, why Flutter is good, why React Native is good, all this stuff. Because when I first learned about Flutter, I was like, this seems really cool, but maybe other cross-platform things are going to do things better. So one of the things that always comes up is like, oh yeah, you know, if you've never done web dev, always choose Flutter. Um, and a lot of companies tend to not choose Flutter because of the fact it's built on JavaScript. They have web developers. Web developers know JavaScript. It's easy to have a React, React developer and turn them into a React Native developer. But to me, that's a terrible reason to actually use a framework. You should choose what's good and try to propagate what's good, not just because it's like cheaper. And as students, we get the option to choose what's good, not just because our company's telling us to do something, because it's what we have experience with. So that's basically why I think Flutter's good. There's a whole lot more if you're interested, but I'm not going to touch on it here. So I'm just going to talk about Dart. So Dart is the programming language that Flutter is built on top of. So Dart was built by Google, started being built by Google around 2012, I think, um, as an alternative to JavaScript. Someone was like, JavaScript's not great, we should replace it. Um, similarly to TypeScript, I think TypeScript was a year later. So basically, they've been developing it since then, but it never really caught popularity outside of Google until about last year when the Flutter boom sort of happened. Uh, TypeScript has sort of become the go-to web version that compiles to JavaScript instead of Dart, but they sort of fill similar purposes. Um, there's some fun things about Dart, like the fact it's open source. It's about twice as fast as JavaScript, and it uh, has ahead of time and just-in-time compilation, which becomes much more relevant when you know the advantages of why that's good, which I'll touch on a little bit later. Uh, last year, GitHub released their like state of the Octoverse report, and Dart was the fastest-growing language in open source at about I think 530, 40% increase. Uh, so there were over five times as much many people using it in 2019 as there were in 2018. For comparison, the second fastest growing language was Rust, and it was at about 260%. And you might think, yeah, of course it grew up because no one was using it before. And you are absolutely right, no one was using it before. But I think it just says how good Flutter is that so many people have started using this new language. And I'm not just saying Dart's great because I was forced to use it all summer and I've been indoctrinated. So you know what Flutter is and you know what Dart is. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about how UI building in Flutter works. Um, I'm not going to go into depth about how Dart works and how to write functions in Dart and all the cool languages, like functionality of the Dart language, because this isn't about Dart, it's about Flutter. So in Flutter, everything on screen is a widget. So your whole app is going to be a widget, and everything inside that's going to be widgets and nested inside of widgets, nested inside of widgets. So in this case, we have some detail widget that's got a child, which is a scaffold, which is a widget. And then the three children of the scaffold are also widgets. Um, so the way Flutter organizes these, if you haven't tweaked that it, it sounds a bit like a tree already, is something that's called Flutter's widget tree. Um, so I'll explain a bit more about how that works. but. If you've ever done web development, it's a bit anal analogous to the DOM. So, everything in, we know everything in Flutter is a widget, and we know that Flutter has a widget tree. Um, but it really wants to understand how this impacts, like what about the UI that we actually write? Because um, we need to know when we want to write UI, how do we write it? Um, I want to have a bit of a disclaimer. If you're unsure about what some of these things mean, don't worry about it too much, because it's just like Flutter-specific stuff. Scaffold is like just a background thing. Uh, and more will be explained later. But if we went into the above, then this is what our Flutter tree would look like. And when we write our UI, we're essentially writing out our, our widget tree. So it's a lot easier done than said. So I'm just going to show you quickly what that might look like. Right, uh, exit full screen. So there's two main IDEs you can use for 
uh, doing flow development. I use Android Studio, but you can use Visual Studio Code. Um, you can use really whatever you want. Um, I just use this because it's easy and does a lot of work for me. Okay. So, this is, oh god, no, I can't see here. Okay, this is a, uh, a basic, very, very basic Flutter app. I'm just gonna run it quickly so you can see what it looks like. Um, but like how I said, everything in here is a widget. So we've just got this function here that's calling this run app on my app here. And my app is a widget. And it has this build function. The build, I'll explain more about it later. But mostly you can just see it representing as like these are all my, this is what we want to return as our tree thing when you build this widget. So when we build this widget, we've got this material app thing, which is a widget which has a home, which is this Flutter demo, which is this widget we've made, um, which just has an empty container. So we're not doing anything with the app right now, which is why this is black, it's an empty container, that doesn't matter. So we wanted a scaffold and we wanted to have those three children below it. Um, so if I just replace this with a scaffold, and I can save, and it will appear on screen. So one of the cool advantages with Flutter uh, is that it has hot reload, which if you've done much web dev, then you might know it with React. A lot of stateful frameworks have hot reload. Uh, basically what it means is it's really easy to just change things and it'll instantly appear on screen really quickly. That has to do a little bit with how it compiles, how I said before. But yeah, Android and iOS both don't have hot reload, so as someone who came from an Android background, it's amazing. Um, so we want an app bar. Scaffold is a special widget, so it's basically meant to be this whole, like, this is a screen of our app widget. So it has some properties like app bar. So if we want an app bar, then we need to supply an app bar widget. And now we have an app bar app. Easy. So, like I said, don't worry too much about the names of these. You'll understand them more if you start working on Flutter a little bit. Um, but yeah. So we also wanted a body. Body is just like what this whole white area would end up being. And I'm just not going to add anything to that. I'm just going to just leave it as an empty container so it shouldn't change anything. And we wanted a bottom navigation bar. Oops. Bottom navigation bar. You'll notice here it says it needs a widget because everything's a widget. If I haven't said it that many times already. So, bottom navigation bar is a little bit more complicated. It's got some weird things where it wants items in my bottom nav bar. When I was setting up my demo for this, it gets really annoying because you have to have like at least two items, but I'll explain a little bit about these things. So when you create widgets in Flutter, they all basically, if you can't tell already, have like capital and they turn yellow for you. Oh yeah, question. Am I just bumping the text size? Like... Oh, sure. Got it. Does anyone know how to, I think I can... Sorry. <laughs> I don't think control plus works in. If you go view the top, one of the slides you do. I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna go to project settings because I think it's potentially. Yes. Oh, it's there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, great. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't want to use a custom font. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that did nothing. Wow, the interface is big. Great. So, increase this font size. <laughs> Let's see if I can just add because that's what we're gonna go. Already signed. Oh well. Let's hope this works. If not, then. Uh, it's writing something else. Great. Sorry? <laughs> we tried view. <laughs> I'm just gonna unfold all of that since that's what I was doing. Maybe I can just like quickly Google increase spot size. Yeah, I've just done that. Um, settings? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Settings and on Yeah, I guess wait. Edit a general 
Yeah, so the, <coughs> on the left side, bottom, the font. Then change font size with oh, yeah, right. And then size narrow. Yeah. 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 Let's hope that works. You took what you Okay. Whoa! That's the demo! Okay. Okay. So we were making our, our bottom nav use bar. Um, don't worry, that's fine. It's because our bottom nav bar is not finished making and I tried to rebuild it. Okay, so we want to have items, and it's going to be, so an item needs a title. Um, and all text in Flutter tends to be a text widget, because it's, everything is a widget. And we're going to also have an icon. Icon. Sure. Okay. So, we have one. Let's save that so I can... Copy paste, because copy paste is amazing. Okay, so now we have a bottom nav bar here. We've got two things with titles. So the things I also want to touch on here, um, Flutter wants you to put commas after everything. The reason it does that is because it has automatic code formatting on save. So if I save this, uh, it's going to break it down a bit more. And when I talked about widget trees earlier, um, you can sort of see how that's working here. So you've got a scaffold, and it has three children, which are the app bar, the body, and the bottom nav bar. The bottom nav bar has four children, which is the texts and the icons. So you can sort of see how the Flutter widget tree works there, and that's basically what we're building. Cool. So I'm going to talk a bit more now about different types of widgets and what this build is actually doing a bit more in depth. It just disappears. <laughs> All right. Hi. That's what that'll do. Okay. So there's two types of widgets in Flutter. You've got stateful widgets and you've got stateless widgets. So stateless widgets are basically widgets that are never going to change their appearance. Um, they don't have to deal with anything, so if I created a button that I always want it to be red, um, it's always going to be red. And when I say stateless, when I say do something, I mean change how they look. So they may have functionality, when you click on a button it still may do something, um, but it might not change how it looks. So stateless widgets don't do any appearance changing, and stateful widgets render their own appearance based on a state of that widget. So state and flutter, easiest way I found to describe it is sort of like a collection of variables. Um, that change how that widget is built. So we had this whole build function here before, um, which had different properties. So let's just say we wanted to, to change the text in a thing. We have, I'm gonna do a demo on this later, but we have state, and we have multiple variables, and when that build function gets called, it's gonna take those variables, and it's gonna build it in a specific way. So that later, when we change those variables, we wanna rebuild it in a different way. So it's basically just changing appearance. So almost all widgets that you write in like proper app development tend to be stateful widgets because they're interacting with the UI in some way, they're changing something in some way. So I'll just go over that briefly as well. All right. So one of the nice things that Flutter does is it has a lot of shorthands of things. So if I want to create a stateless widget, I just write stls and it'll fill that out for me. Or if I want to create a stateful widget, I just write a stateful, and it will fill that all out for me. So I've got a new stateful widget called Flutter Demo. I don't know why it does that, but yeah, it's black. Same as before, we just have an empty container. For now, it's essentially a stateless widget, because we don't have anything in our state. So I'm just going to do a pretty basic counter app. So you can see, when you click a button, the UI gets rebuilt, it changes, values change. So I'm going to start off with a scaffold, as I did before. So we have this nice white background. And because I like app bars, I'm going to create an app bar. OK. So to create a counter, all I'm going to do is I'm going to have some text, and I'm going to have a button. When you click the button, the counter is going to increase its value. So it's important to note that when you are doing this, um, this build function is what gets called when you want to rebuild. So you will tell Flutter, 
hey, we changed these parts of our state, we want to rebuild our app, and then that app will be rebuilt based on those variables. So we have a scaffold, which has an app bar, and we have a body, which I'm just going to say is a container. So I want two widgets next to each other, so I'm going to use something that's just called the rope. I think it's fairly self-explanatory. You're going to have a list of children, and it's going to just place them next to each other. So my children that I want is I'm going to want a button. So I'm just going to use the raise button. And I'm going to have some text, which is going to be my counter here. So we've got our button, and we've got our text up there. Um, this is when I'm going to go through a little bit of styling in Flutter. Um, so I want this to be in the middle of the screen. So there's two ways I can do that. So the row right now is taking up the entire top bit, even though the, the things aren't actually taking up the entire top bit. So I want to make this go in the middle. I just want to wrap it in something that we call a center widget. So in built in Android Studio, I'm just clicking wrap with widget and center. Center, easy. And then row will also have some alignment, and we will call it space even. I don't actually know what most of these like spacing things do. They just work. So, okay. So our button looks a little bit funny because it doesn't have something to actually happen when you press it. So I'm just going to give it something empty for now. Cool. So now we can click our button, and we have some text here. So right now, for all intents and purposes, it's still a stateless widget. We're not changing anything. It's not rebuilding the UI. It's doing nothing. So <clears throat> we want to have some variable. So a collection of variables, so I'm just going to create some variable here that I'm going to call my capture value. We're going to say it's zero. Um, and down here in my text, I'm going to say my capture value is, and I'm just going to, oh, that is not a value. 100 value. Cool. So if I say this, say my counter value is zero. Cool. So that is right now rendering our UI based on the state variable. So that's fine. It'll work. When we trigger a rebuild with a new value, it'll work. So those are the two main things you need to do if you want UI to change. You need to change the variables, and you need to tell Flutter that you actually want to rebuild something. It's not going to do it for you every time you change a variable, because that would mean, because it doesn't always know if you actually want to rebuild, and rebuild is obviously work that might slow your app down. So here, if I go counter value increases, this will not work. So I want to ask if anyone thinks about what I just said and why this won't work. Because you're not sure if the, um, the text won't be written, so I was just going to be change the state. So I am changing the state here. Um, this is state variable. But it won't be rendered. And you're right. It won't be rendered because we haven't told it to be rendered. So Flutter has a nice little set state here. So whenever you change your state and you want it to be rendered, uh, you should be checking it in the state set, set state variable. What this is basically going to do is it's going to go to your widget tree, and it's going to say, OK, we changed counter value. In what widgets is counter value used? Counter value is used in our text widget here. And that's the only place counter value is used in terms of actually accessing its value. So what it's going to do is it's only going to go to that text widget and update that and rebuild that. Everything else in the app is going to stay exactly as it was. So this is sort of how stateful UIs work. It's how React works as well, uh, pretty sure. And um, yeah, so if we do that and save, and we click this, then value increase. It's great. Um, so I'll just add something else, because why not? So let's say we wanted to change our background color. And we will call it background color. Uh, so scaffold has a background color property, so that works out well for us. We can just set to that. Um, and in here, we will also set our background color to, so this might be confusing for people, but I'll explain what it does in a second. It's just a treasury statement. Um, so basically saying, it's like an if else. If it's equal to white, then it will be blue. Uh, otherwise, it will be white. Cool. So if we click this. Cool. So the thing is, <laughs> uh, so this is now means we're changing two variables, our counter value and our background color. So because background color is used at the very top of our widget tree for the scaffold, um, it's going to rebuild all of that from all the way down. 
Um, but when you actually have a proper app and you have all these things nested inside each other, you're almost never building from the top. So it just saves really quick. Cool. So I that works. We can use the state demo. I have another state demo to, to help you understand it more, but I will go through that if we get time. So, a lot of people ask me this question when I'm like, oh yeah, Flutter can do anything. They're like, oh yeah, but what if it's Android specific stuff, like accessing files on Android? Flutter doesn't have any built stuff for that, it doesn't just work, it's not UI. Um, but Flutter does provide you the functionality to write anything you want. So, basically, the way it will work is if you want something that's only on Android and you want to write your own logic on the Android side, then Flutter Mean allows you to do that. You can go write Android code, you can write Kotlin code, you can write Java code, you can write Android views if you want, and Flutter will just show that to the person or use that functionality um, if you need to. So a good example of this is uh, something I actually did over summer, which was Unity. So Unity is a game engine. Um, basically, it builds for Android and iOS, um, but they have no reason they would make something for actually work for Flutter because it's not that popular. Um, so if you want to do Unity and Flutter, it works just fine. Just means you have to write it for Android and you have to write it for iOS. And then Flutter, your dark code, will just call those native plugins. You can do this for anything. You can do it for language features. You can do it for, for views. You can do it for UI components. And you can even do it for libraries. So if a library is only Java, that's fine. You just import it on your Android side and then call it from your dark code. Cool. So I was talking before about how web compilation sort of just works. Um, for what it's worth, I uh, tested this about 45 minutes ago, and it didn't work. <laughs> but I will give it a go. So I just changed. I'm trying to build the web instead. This is the same thing we had before. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it works as well, because I run Firefox, um, and debugging normally is used on Chrome only. Um, luckily, I can just test it. Let's see if it works here before showing it to you. Let's check Chrome. Firefox is not liking it at the moment. Oops. I was told, I went to a presentation earlier this year, and they said the worst thing you can do when you're doing a presentation is to stop talking. So that's me rambling there, but it worked. It's on Chrome. Hopefully, there you go. There you go. It just works. <laughs> oh, it works. Thank you. <laughs> um, what happened with the inspect element? I think inspect does some weird stuff. I looked at this the other day. Um, I think it just has like this pane. Um, so it doesn't. It doesn't actually like fully turn into JavaScript elements. Um, so the way Flutter works, I assume for web, I don't really know. But the way it works for Android and iOS is it sort of just takes over this one pane over the screen, and it just puts everything on top of that. So it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't compile to native components, so it's not turning it into something that Android knows what it is. It's just like this one screen, and everything's on that screen. Um, so when you're looking at an Android app, if you've ever done Android dev, it's just one activity, and everything's just flattened onto that activity. Um, so you're not like navigating between things. It's just one thing. Cool. That works. It's great. So I think it's important to talk about the bad things about Flutter, despite how much I like it. Um, so these are the main things. I'm basically just going to talk through them. Um, it's, it's very new. It, it only got released for like official proper use at the end of 2019, before that was in beta. So a lot of companies are still like testing the waters with it. They're not really sure what to use. And because it's not mature, there's not as much support online. If you want to go stack overflow something, there's probably less obscure things that you can find on it. Um, web and desktop support, it's not ready yet. A lot of companies are starting to transition their mobile things to maybe move them to web and desktop later. But for now, it's not there. Um, it's not JavaScript. There aren't infinite libraries. Um, for the web version of Flutter, Similarly, how you can write native plugins for Android and iOS, you can pull in JavaScript libraries, um, but Dart libraries themselves are, are <coughs> totally limited. Um, yeah, 
It uses Dart. Most people have never heard of Dart. Most people have never heard of Flutter. If I tell you what JavaScript is, you probably know what that is. People get a little bit scared when they don't know what the language is. They're like, oh, Dart. You know, I don't have to learn a new language. Um, and apparently, it creates slightly larger apps. So if you want to create something that's really small, um, probably not the best thing for it. OK, so as much as I recommend Flutter, I also really recommend people try mobile dev. So I was in my third year of uni when I started doing Android. Um, before that, I'd done web, I'd done front end, I'd done back end. Um, both were OK. Back end, I didn't really like. I tried Android, and I really liked it. So I think it's really important to just try a bunch of different things. Um, but also, yeah, try Flutter. It's way better than Android. Um, and it does all the same things. So that's, that's basically it. Um, hopefully, it's enough of a talk that you can sort of go away, look into it more, become interested in it. Um, but if you have any questions, then yeah, shoot. That's it.